art. How does one value art? How does one put value in art? I mean, I can look at this uh, piece of art behind me here and I can say that a child can very easily do this. It's essentially a large piece of canvas with uh, paint strewn across, apparently without much thought to form. But is there really no thought to the form of this art piece? Well, it's in the art worker. It's in the person behind this piece of art. It is in the hands of the painter. And the painter of this piece of art, along with all these other wonderful pieces of art around me, well, arguably, he's Malaysia's most celebrated visual artist. Now, it is with great honor that he has agreed to have this interview with us on this program. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce to you our guest for this week. His name is Latif Muhyiddin. My name is Said Fardino Omar, and you are watching, oh my God, such a special episode of In Person. Okay, today's episode of In Person is slightly different because we are not only going to go into the personality of the person that we're talking to this week, but we are actually going through his work. Now, this is a uh, never done before thing. Uh, well, I don't think we've done this on Malaysian TV, so we're very proud to not only present to you the artist himself, but also his paintings and his very own rendition of what was going through every single step of the way in his entire journey. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, we proudly present to you Tuan Latif Muhyiddin. Latif, thank you so much for joining us. Terima kasih banyak. Thank you. It's thank you. such an honour. Thank you. So we it, talk to an artist, it's not just about talking about the artist. Like. We have to talk to the artist through the work. As you like. <laughs> and we are starting here. Uh, and these are your early days, yeah? So what were the things that were going through your head in the early days? And what can we see here? I don't know what went to my head, but this is what <laughs> happened. This is the, uh, you come around, uh, mm -hmm. this is... What you're looking is the first painting. This was your the very first, first painting? first painting in the world uh -huh. for me. This is my first painting. Uh -huh. The landscape, the uh, Kampung Melayu, Pemandangan Sawah Padi. Uh -huh. uh, this is 1950. This was back in 1950. 1950. Uh, mungkin is uh, <laughs> Kampung Sineri. Uh -huh. Sawah Padi and then the, uh, some part of the, you know, uh, some coconut trees. And uh -huh. This is normal uh, Kampung Melayu, Sawah Padi. So, so from this, we can learn that actually, Tonatif, your early years, your beginning was just the same like most other artists. Yeah, yeah, you sure. look at the things around yeah, you. Yeah, it's yeah. a simple uh, kampong, sawapadi kind of landscape. Mm -hmm. I think that's how we started all over Asia. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing uh, when you're small, you do this. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we go to the next one, it's also the kampong. But now you have the half kampong, half. Uh, uh, for the, uh, <coughs> Pantai. Pantai. Mm -hmm. Or maybe fishing village. So there are two words there. And one coconut tree. Mm -hmm. And here you have two coconut tree. <laughs> That's so, the word. So what's, <laughs> <laughs> so what's the explanation there then? There's, no, there's nothing much to explain. It's just a scenery. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure you know. The Kampung Melayu with the Melayu Pondok. Mm -hmm. uh, dengan uh, Pondok dia. Uh, pokok Nyok, Pokok Kelapa. And then the landscape. Which is now two, yeah. The Nayan uh -huh. is a bit too long, but this is a really truly Nelayan village. Right. Um, yeah, fishing but village. What I find uh -huh. interesting here uh -huh. so far in uh -huh. the first three paintings is that 50, 51, 52. Mm -hmm. You were 9, 10, mm -hmm. and 11 years 11 old. 11 years old, yeah. You follow the ages. 11 yeah, okay. years old, you're already painting something like yeah, this. Yeah, okay. And then, <laughs> uh, yeah. And then there's another Kampung village, uh -huh. uh, 1953. And then come a series, uh, what, two, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, mm -hmm. which is quite uh, uh, significant because uh, I didn't know, I just discovered. What did you discover? A few days ago that I was doing a, 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 a series of work, uh, which I call mini-series, mm -hmm. uh, uh, focusing on the night lighting mm -hmm. with, uh, you know, 
focusing on the night uh, lighting. Oh yeah. Night lighting. Huh? Actually, yeah. And uh, and uh, also I was doing uh, the technically already developed what you call by the, uh, you know sculpture. Uh, uh, <coughs> yeah. Uh, this is very like thick, 60, uh, yeah. 60, so this thick. was during your teenage years, your later teenage years, like yeah. 18, 19 yeah. years old. Yeah. Why? Why do you, do you remember why you decided to focus more on night lighting? I don't know. I don't know. You just felt yeah, like doing yeah, yeah. it. So, so this six series is focusing on light lighting and reflect on the faces of the uh, figures. Uh -huh. And also you have uh, three people in the uh, garage uh -huh. and three people uh, mengaji and three people uh, ronggeng. Uh -huh. <laughs> and also three people <laughs> around the... Three people around the satay salad. And they all have the same theme. So by itself, it's already a series. Right, okay. Yeah, a series, which I didn't know that I was doing a small series. Now, no, no, no. <laughs> see, how many years later. <laughs> yeah. But Tuan Latif, can we stop by for a while and just look at this? You see, we moved from... Mm. Oh, of course, that was mm. when you were a child, essentially. Uh -huh. So that, those were your early days. Mm. But as you progress on, we can see mm. you coming up with a very... Mm. Uh, clear definition yeah. of your style, which is yeah, your stroke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's very heavy-handed, yeah, yeah, and it's yeah, also yeah. not just the brush stroke, but it's sculpting also. Yeah, yeah like pastel. Uh -huh. uh, was this a conscious decision, or it just happened? It just happened. It's part of the natural development, I suppose. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And then uh, we moved to the uh, the first uh, in this series of uh, what we call uh, still life. Mm -hmm. That's how it started. Can we go from here to the... Okay, uh, this, is, this is the first painting you see. We uh, are... So yeah. this is a different... So this is moving on from one series Nin and on to uh, a... So 1959, mm -hmm. I had a scholarship to Germany. That's my first... One of the first... Uh, local, 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 teenage... Uh, yes. Buddha to teenager uh, and yeah. then scholarship to Germany. Yeah, student days. We were doing a still life. Right, I see. There. We have to go for a short break right now. But when we come back, we are going to go into the next phase of Tuan Latin Moedian's life. So stay with us on in person. Okay, now uh, we're back with, uh, well, I call him Tuan Latif, tapi dia bisik, he said, don't know, Pak Latif is probably right. <laughs> okay, so we understood the early developments from, from a 10-year-old, 9-year-old boy who could uh, do wonders with the brush and moving up to when he was in his early 20s. And then after that, uh, after high school, you were given the opportunity to travel overseas. Yeah. You went to Germany. Yeah. So, so yeah. after high school, you went to Singapore first. No, Singapore earlier. Singapore earlier? Earlier. Uh, yeah. And uh, then? Uh, after uh, Singapore to Seremban. To Seremban, back Seremban, to King George. Uh, yeah, King George. And then to Berlin. And then to Berlin. So this is where we start with yeah, Berlin here, yeah? This is the normal uh, student. So from scenery to people, people being your subject, and then uh, we move to still okay, life. Still life. Okay. This is the very formal, uh, this, I mean, uh, one of the subjects you are asked to do is the uh, put <coughs> some object on the, on the table. Mm -hmm. And you draw that, that mm -hmm. become what we call still life. Okay. One of the. Yeah, yeah. So this is 1962 acrylic. Mm -hmm. I have some uh, some sort of bottle and cone and all. And you see the shape. <coughs> this cone here mm -hmm. later become Puchorabong. Okay. The shape, uh -huh. Which is also very dominant in the Pago Pago series. Yes. Uh -huh. And this is shape, strangely enough somehow become very also uh, very prominent in some of the Pago Pago series. This series always always appear <laughs> in several times later on. The, the, yeah, the, the yeah, shape itself, yeah? The shape itself. So, uh, uh, question again. Uh, if you look at your development there, uh, uh, in the early stage, we uh, can see that uh, in terms of styling, uh, uh, you, are, you are more than capable uh, of uh, uh, reproducing something that is still life uh, to become more real. But uh, this one, it looks very stylized and... No, no, this is a European, uh, European, this uh, is a, a European style. Uh, style, European style uh -huh. of doing still life. It does uh, those days with a acrylic and mm -hmm. this is what uh, you come up. Mm -hmm. And from there, of course, you move from the uh, still life to uh, what we call uh, this another still life mm -hmm. uh, with uh, some of the flower mm -hmm. and maybe some fruit uh, mm -hmm. and the reflection uh, back there mm -hmm. in the mirror. And this is also very sort of typical kind of uh, you know uh, setup. 
for the a, a very European style. Yeah. Is, it, is that why we see like people like you know other artists like Van Gogh? I mean, they also do things like that. Yeah. Put put flowers on table. Yeah, yeah, this is a part of the tradition. That's yeah, a tradition. So, uh, start all so Palatif the had classical. to go through all that, lah. <laughs> classical, classical training. Classical, yeah. Okay. And this is the same <laughs> continuation of that mm -hmm. from the indoor. Mm -hmm. uh, in summer time, maybe uh, or no, or, I mean, uh, you go out and you paint a landscape mm -hmm. outside your room. Uh, this is the uh, garden in winter, 1962, done in Berlin. Also, in Berlin, yeah. You were in Berlin for four years. Four years so, yeah, what were the before you came back and you you uh, started to discover something else? What were some of the most important things that you remember about the time in Berlin that you know you held on? Until now, some of your key learnings, even the yeah, all the training, the basic training. It's just you just saw the entire experiences yeah, yeah, when training. The, the technical, the basic, uh, technical, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, using the brush stroke and all those uh, technical. It's mostly painting, technique, uh, technique. Uh, technique. It's technique. Technique is very important uh, for the painting. Okay. Uh, in fact, so that uh, most of the people you don't see the technique. They will worry about the title and the series. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas in painting, true, true. so many uh, techniques involved. Okay. And this is what you should observe. Educate more. me. I, I'm, not an, I'm not a painter. I'm not an artist. So when you say technique, I understand what technique is, but I don't know what it is. So yeah. how would you explain it to me? You look at the painting. <laughs> <laughs> Alawa, that's what my teacher used to say. You look at the painting, you know that. But you know, when you say te technique, for example, if you take this one here, what is the technique that you're trying to put across? No, uh, I mean, you, <laughs> you have to go to school to describe the technique. I mean, that's what I've done. There's a, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the brush stroke. Uh, how do you capture the uh, flowers, mm -hmm. which normally come up from the trees, but there's some flowers in the tree itself. I see if the tree is, uh, <laughs> uh, it has a, Babies uh -huh. and uh, under the, inside the trees is already it's the already potential, the flowers. potential flowers and plants and so forth. So these are the uh, techniques uh, that you yeah, learn yeah, in yeah. school, yeah. I, yeah, I, I can I, ask I, you to explain in one sentence. Yeah, 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 <laughs> to do that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, and then we came back from yeah. Berlin. Uh, we came back to the no. This actually this one is before Berlin. Oh, this is yes, it's fifty-five. Yeah. Uh huh. So we have to go very fast now. Uh -huh. This is another. I uh, believe uh, uh, what you call it the. Uh, Fishing wheel and landscape, mm -hmm. and you see the boat is already has some element of the uh, uh, of the uh, which later we call it pago pago mm -hmm. ships. So already part already part of it is already coming up here with mm -hmm. the uh, what do you call it in the painting. Uh, I think this is another. Oh, this is very interesting. Uh, this is a kabuki actor. This part <laughs> of, part of the uh, I mean the studio work in Berlin. Mm -hmm. You know, so this one. Uh, this one also what we call uh, what is it? circus dancer. But this one is a different series already. Ah, this, this one, one this is performing arts. Yeah, this, this is Berlin period. Okay. Eh? Uh, with some object and figures and so forth. Eh? Uh -huh. And then sometimes I go... Uh, and this is the... Strangely, 1963, uh -huh. Imago. Uh -huh. uh, so if the Pago-Pango standard, they should come after Pago Pago, I mean during Pago Pago, which mm -hmm. is 64, mm -hmm. but this one is 63 in Berlin. Mm -hmm. Meaning I have done Pago Pago shape already. Even before you even actually before embarked, embarked on the Pago Pago series? Before I went to Thailand. Uh -huh. uh, the shape, the, the, the image of Pago Pago is already inborn, it's already uh, painted in Berlin two or three years before mm -hmm. I went to Thailand. Mm -hmm. This how it is. And this is another discovery. <laughs> that you just <laughs> discovered, yeah? yeah I see, right. I see. Uh, uh, so these are. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, and then so we come back. We come back. And this is, the, this is now we're already coming up to the, what we call uh, Pago Pago series. Uh -huh. So all these two, Sampai, uh, right to the, at the back, this is all Pago Pago. Uh -huh. What we call Pago Pago series. Ha, what, is the, what is the definition of the Pago Pago series? Uh, Pago Pago, I, <laughs> I coined the word from Pagoda. Okay. Plus, uh, what we call in the village, 
with the slang of pagar pagar jadi bagu pagu pagu uh -huh. okay ah pagu pagu jadi pagu pagu <laughs> so what you were trying to capture through pagu pagu was nature and culture both at the same both, time both both okay nature and culture if i look at this ah. then i'm supposed to see both elements of nature and also of culture yeah and ah. of course culture this is through your travels yeah, right? the, the, the asian culture yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, so yeah, you you yeah, went the, out there to look at yeah. the temples, yeah, yeah, the building, the, the old traditional temple, the, the building, the the the, the uh, handmade, the craft, mm -hmm. uh, and all this uh, this uh, culmination of that. So uh, so these uh, are the things uh, that you these, can uh, see. Especially this one, for example, you know, there's a lot of uh, 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 ingredient of the uh, you know. So tell me. How many? I mean, this was the year here is 1965, yeah, 1966. Uh, all the how, how many years did you spend to come up with the entire Pago Pago series? 64, 66, and then five years. Five years. Five years. Yeah. And 40 years, 50 years down mm. the road, mm. whenever uh. we talk about Latif Mohidin, uh. the first name that still uh. comes to mind is yeah. the Pago Pago series. Yeah. Why do you think this is so? <laughs> Even though you have so much work after uh, that, uh, uh, uh. I think because there's strong image. Uh -huh. about Pago, I think it's and you spent yeah. many years yeah. creating this series, yeah? yeah? Okay. Okay, we have to go yeah. for a very yeah. short break yeah. one more time. Yeah. Uh, and when we come back, it's the very last part of uh, this exploration of art with uh, Latin Medellin. So stay with us on in person. Okay, we're already in the last block with uh, Palatip, Latif uh, and we are discovering the Pago Pago series. You know, that's the most famous uh, series of artwork. I dare say, by any Malaysian standard, you mentioned Malaysian art, and one of the first names that comes to mind is, of course, the Pago Pago series by uh, Latif Medellin. Uh, Palatif, uh, if I may just um, take, before we ca carry on with this, um, throughout your entire journey of how many years you've been doing this, since the 50s, Onwards until now, what do you think is the most meaningful moment of art to you in your in, in your entire career? You are not one person who I can say, hey, come, let's interview, very rare. So this opportunity is, of course, golden. What are you proudest of the most? What was the question? The moment? What, what, yes, <laughs> the moment that you're proudest of the most in your entire it's career. Still, it's still a mystery. I, cannot, I don't know <laughs> when is the moment. I think that basically the moment of creation of the painting itself is the most uh, is always it is the moment when you're working yeah when you're working when right. you're when you're working there it's the not moment. when you're having an exhibition like this not when people talk uh, about different it. that that's different uh, that, that different uh, i mean different moment okay? uh -huh. <laughs> no what i have to tell you this one for example uh, these four pieces this is uh, the joy <laughs> of this, uh, having the exhibition is mm -hmm. these four pieces is really Myself, even myself, I've never seen it after I sold them or they've been taken from my studio. Mm -hmm. I have no chance of uh, exhibiting them. It's never been in the, any publication. Mm -hmm. These four paintings are really a rare one. These ones? These four, this ones four rare here, one, yeah? Rare one. Okay. I've, 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 it is the first time I've seen it since I. Uh, since I sold them. Since you sold them. Uh, and this was painted in 66. Uh, so when 66. did you sell this? I ran around 66. In 1966 itself, wow. Uh, 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 Tan Sri Ahmad Kamil, yes. at that time was uh, in the embassy of uh, Bangkok. Uh -huh. He bought this, and then I've seen them again until recently, until now. <laughs> uh, and this one is very strange. Uh, this painting, uh, <laughs> I remember at that time I had nightmare, nightmare of Bangkok. Okay. So I was doing kind of uh, Bangkok, sinking Bangkok, re-emerging, <laughs> all kind of thing. And this is one of my, and also very strange, very different from uh, other, you see the image of that, very different. I call it sinking of Bandar Tenggelam, sinking mm -hmm. city. And I was afraid of a bank, Bangkok sinking, and I had painted this in 1965, Five. and only recently, it's really truly sinking, isn't it? Because of the floods <laughs> and all that, yeah. yeah. Yes, later yes. Come <laughs> reality. <laughs> a few months ago, uh, a few years, uh, no, it was a few months ago, I spoke to uh, one of the chancellors of a local university and they were, what they were doing is they were cleaning up the stores uh -huh. and then they discovered some of your paintings. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh -huh. So, 
I mean, and you said those four paintings were never seen until recently. Yeah. Yeah. So, how much of your work is really out there? I have no idea. <laughs> Do you keep yeah. a catalog or? I mean, no, this is I national treasure. Yeah, yeah, I don't have, <laughs> I don't have the, the, the inventory myself. Uh -huh. But I suspect all my work should be around over a thousand, maybe around. Over thousand, a thousand uh, pieces, thousand yeah? Pieces, yeah. Throughout the entire time that you were, yeah. you've been um, painting. Yeah, I'm mean, including the sketches and all that. Mm -hmm. One thousand, one thousand five, easily. Maybe. So these are very small selection of what you have uh, Maybe uh, less than one third or one third. Uh, this uh, is just one third of all the work that you've done. I think so. And, and but a good, a good one third. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This yeah, is really, a, really yeah, good. These yeah. are the iconic pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The and and you know coming back to that university who found, you know what that tells us is which university is this? This was University of Naya. Oh really? Yes. Oh, they, 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 were, they, were, they were cleaning up the. When was this? Uh, I think this was several months ago when I interviewed the oh, vice really? chancellor. Oh, really? So they were cleaning up the university's oh. uh, faculty of medicine and discovered Babago. and discovered some of your paintings. Which one? I, I'm not sure which one they were, oh. but well, what, well, that, lucky fine, huh? <laughs> what that means is, you know, you have all this work around, and it is considered a national treasure yeah. because you are one of the most <laughs> important artists in yeah. the country. How do you feel about that? Well, luckily, they found them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really lost them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When you well, first there's a high time you look into your storeroom or <laughs> some remote places in, yeah. a, in a whatever public building or yeah. civil building. Then one fun, imagine you find one pago pago in the storeroom. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> it's not just about the value of the painting, uh, but it's also no, the meaning of no, it. No, right? no, you have, you must. It doesn't matter pago pago or not. Uh, your artwork you should uh, really, uh, you know, take care. And that doesn't mean it, it, it applies to one artwork and many artworks. Yeah, it should all be given the yeah, same yeah. treatment. After all, it's only uh, this. It's only it's only it's only one in the world. Mm -hmm. I cannot repeat. <laughs> you know. Oh my God! Uh, when he said that, I got goosebumps. It's only one in the world. Of course, yeah. we haven't seen the most yeah, iconic. The, the, yeah. Now, now we go to the last one. So. These are the, the rest of the Pago Pago. Uh -huh. huh? And I mean, some of the Pago Pago. And just one before we go to the icon, this is one of uh, a uh, very important piece. Uh -huh. This one, what we call, uh, 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 it represents a missing series. This missing series Puzzles. is after Pago Pago, there's another series. Uh -huh. Nobody has known that. I call it post Pago Pago mm -hmm. or Neo Pago Pago. And nobody knows them because the whole series is lost, missing in London. Then How they, did it go missing? Yeah, when we, I had an ex exhibition <coughs> in the Commonwealth Arts Institute mm -hmm. in London, 1973. After the exhibition, I put the thing in the uh, uh, aluminum file, and uh, a lot of people came and looked for it, and it was, it was, uh, it was not found. So it's missing until now. And this one happened bought by my friend in Dublin. Uh -huh. yeah, his name is Paddy. I said, Paddy, could you swap with me one painting of yours you bought from London? Because the whole series is lost. He said, yes. So I got it back. So this is the only one that uh, uh, is the uh, only evidence that I of have Of that series, series, that particular Neo Pago Pago uh, series? It's about, I don't know, about less than 30 pieces. Wow. So this is the missing link. And so I'm very the, happy so to that, that four is not the rarest. The rarest uh, is actually the yeah the yeah. This is also rare because yeah. It, uh, yeah. yeah. This is a unknown series. Right, the right, right. series, the missing series. Wow. And uh, there's only after this that I went. I go to uh, Mindscape in uh, Langkawi. Langkawi. No, right. I see. Yeah. But this this uh, year. This is the, yeah. This is. This what they say is the the pago pago. When uh, you Google pago pago, this one is uh, the one that comes out the most lah. And what is the most special thing about this particular painting from your point of view? <coughs> no, from your point of view for that. No, no, I can, you cannot, no, no, oh, too much pressure. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> too much pressure. Uh, to me, uh, what no, is the most uh, special uh, thing is here, the name yeah, on yeah. it, which has your name on it. Yeah, I think, uh, I think there is so many reasons, maybe, maybe because of the, uh, the, 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 the ship is a, uh, is a, uh, Almost what you call compact, uh -huh. minimal and clear, you know, with the moon at the back and there's one there and so, 
and is a uh, is almost three by three uh, mm -hmm. square, and uh, is only grey with uh, yellow there, and the red at the bottom. Maybe as far as uh, you know, the shape is concerned. So maybe the one that people see as they present the other Pago Pago series, mm -hmm. they think this is what. This uh, summarizes the Summarize whole thing. Yeah, so that's why I <laughs> become. <laughs> so it's a good point to end this interview here with you know one of the most iconic pieces, Palatif. Thank you so much well, once you, again. Dino. Thank you, Dino. It's a very good honor to uh, finally get yeah, a chance yeah, to yeah, speak yeah, to yeah, you. Yeah, you. And you've been with me, Saifari Noma, and I've of course been with uh, Latif Muhyiddin, uh, well, national treasure, national treasure. Uh, and you've been watching in person, and we hope you've been inspired. So stay with us, and Asrawani, we'll see you again soon. Bye bye.